second. <laughs> We're live, man. Oh. James Stokes, how are you? Sir, I'm doing good. Malcolm, how are you, bud? I'm I'm doing good, man. I'm so glad you, I'm fired up. I don't know if you saw the Facebook video that I made. I did not. Oh yeah, I was telling everybody you're going to be on here. And oh, everything. that's awesome! I wish I, I wish I would have seen it. I, I would have shared it. I was like, you can't believe who's going on the podcast. So, man, it's good to have you. And uh, you're you're an, uh, an actor, and and uh, mm. you played one of my favorite characters of all time. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I got lucky in playing this character, an iconic character as Jason Voorhees, is just literally changed my life. Yeah, right, man. I mean, really. I mean, it's just. It's been that fun, huh? It, it really has. And there's been so many of us that's, pl well, there's, there's been a lot of Jasons out there. But right. I can say for myself that I take it very seriously. Um, I studied the character. I talked to Kane Hodder. I mean, I talked to C.J. Graham. I mean, I, I, I did the studying on it, you know, because Jason doesn't talk. So right. everything is I in know. his mannerisms. And 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 I've, I've had people come up to me that have seen my movies and say that, my mannerisms are as close to Kane Hodder as they've ever seen anybody. Right. And that's a big compliment to me. Right. So that that's what I strive for is right. to to have those type of mannerisms. Because Kane Hodder to me was the best Jason. Because there's a certain body language that Jason does use that's like very special. Oh absolutely. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. And it and it it really does um uh, does describe the character. And that's the thing, is like um but I bet you're getting a lot of gigs though. Uh, from doing that, and I really have. I mean, um, you know, um, I t again, I take my, I take my acting seriously. Uh, it's just like um, uh, any any role that I get, um, I, I, I prepare myself. I make sure I know my lines. I'm always on time. You know, I, I, I really work hard to make the director um, whatever vision he sees. I want. I'm an actor. So I like to be directed, you know, tell me what you want. I'll give right. you that, you know, I mean, but a lot of directors let you be yourself. And that's another thing that I really like. But uh, yeah, th being directed and told the vision that they want to see come out. I, that's what I want to do. So what's this new movie that you're in? Uh, well, it's called Child of Child of Love. And um, uh, it's a, a Nashville based here. We, we shot it in Millersville, Tennessee. Uh, Eric Roberts was in it, and a couple of other big names was in it. And um, I play a holy roller preacher, I oh, guess you would awesome. say. Yeah, so it's a little different, a little different from me, you know, from the roles that I've been playing, you know, as far as right. horror films and stuff like that. But right. I want to show diversity. I mean, that's the right. thing is uh, being an actor is is showing diversity, and being able to get into a different character and actually um, show your range. Now, for you know something that that a lot of a lot of people don't go over on podcasts, and I'd like to ask you. So, do you have like an agent? Do you have an agent yet, or do you have any of that stuff? Or do, are you in a pool of actors that they could choose from? How does that all work? Just yes, to these, I, to young, mm -hmm. young people out there yeah. that want to know how to get into this, you know. Yes, uh, the main thing is uh, getting some professional headshots done, getting a resume started. I, an agent is good to have. An agent can look for. Um, projects out there that you can't see all the time uh, from SAG films to independent films and all that stuff. So yes, I do have several different agents agents in different areas. I have one in Nashville. I have one in London, um, you know, cr across the seas and stuff. Okay. So yeah, I have, I have different agents all over the place that, that help me. I have one in, based out of Dallas that does LA uh, out West stuff. I have right. one in New York that does, a, you know, a, Northeast kind of stuff. And then I have one in Atlanta, you know, that does Atlanta stuff and stuff like that. So, and then as far as a manager, I mean, you can go as far as having a manager. You don't have to have a manager or something like that. Managers are good to have. They kind of take care of you and make sure that, that things are done right and done, you know, you, you getting what you're, you know, right. you're supposed to get. Well, I always think of, I always think of Tropic Thunder. Oh, when 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 Peck walks in there to sure. to uh, uh oh dang it Les Grossman's office yeah. and he's like he's supposed to have a video recorder on location you know <laughs> and I think about you know like yeah. um, that's so Hollywood I don't know who Tom Cruise played in that movie the Les Grossman character has to be a guy they know sure that actually acts like that yeah. maybe exaggerated but you know you know you can't say you know I'm gonna rip your tits off you know to anybody <laughs> that works right. for you you can't do that but, yeah. but 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 I'm saying though um 
like I, I was just wondering because that I don't know if that's his agent or his his uh or if Les Grossman's the agent and he's his manager. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a funny movie to compare it to, but it's yeah. you know it's so about making a movie. But it's still you know? about making a movie. Yeah. yeah, it's about making a movie. So I was just wondering about that. And do you ever feel like you're going to get out there in Hollywood and be like a part of that thing? Um, and do you think that's a bad thing? Because I wouldn't mind talking to you about that if you've heard you know, the stuff that we've heard. Because I've had a podcast about that on here. Well, this is the thing about Hollywood. A lot of movies have moved out of Hollywood. Right. Now, I think mainly because L.A. or the or California in, in, as a state doesn't give incentive to make a movie out there. So it's the bigger... Really? Big, yeah, no, they don't. They don't give direct. You know, they don't give incentives to make movies like like Georgia. You yeah. know, Atlanta is making way more movies than L.A. or or in California because of the tax incentives. All these these people are wanting to move down there to do to do get the tax incentive to How make a movie. Interesting. It is. Kentucky gives a really good tax incentive. New Mexico gives a really good tax incentive. Tennessee gives a decent tax incentive, but Georgia gives a really good one too. That's the reason a lot of things are going overseas. Romania, my goodness, it gives a, an amazing tax incentive to go there and shoot to Romania. So that's, I, I went to Romania and shot a movie. Okay, I was going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. Wes, have you done a lot of overseas? Not a lot. I've, 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 ha I've got uh, three other films slated over overseas. Uh, one in uh, London, one in Bulgaria, and one in uh, south of Spain, somewhere okay. around there. And I just shot one in Romania. Well, not just. I mean, I shot about two years ago now. So the movie should be coming out. It's called Adrenaline. Uh, it's a Lionsgate film. Uh, so I was going to ask you if you work for those folks. And yes. How, how, yeah. how was that? Was it any different than what you do anywhere else? Absolutely not. No. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's a, Any set that you go to, it's, it's always run differently because of the different people that runs it. But right. it's mainly the same kind of stuff. Um, but no, the director was an amazing guy. I mean, I know him. I'm still friends with him today. Uh, the, the producers that was on it, they treated you like a king over there. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. So I had an amazing experience and it, it just all went really well. Did you go see Dracula's Castle? No, I didn't get to. Are no. you serious? No, I didn't get to. I didn't get to go. But with that's nothing. right next door to it. It right? is. It's, it's right next not, door to it. Yeah. In Romania. But now listen, when I went over there, we was in the height of COVID. So literally, right. the the country had to give a written letter to us or to me to be able to get into the country anyway. I had to take, oh my goodness, I had to take so many COVID tests just from from Nashville to Atlanta, Atlanta to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to into Bucharest. I took so many COVID tests, but, and we had to stay in one, we had to be in one area at all times. The movie sets and everything, we we had to be transported by a, a Romanian person and I had to get PCR tests, you know, which are COVID tests before I can even leave the country. So it was, it was rough. So to be honest with you, if I'd have had more time or if the COVID thing wouldn't have been going on, I might've been able to do a little sightseeing and stuff. Right. But Romania is absolutely beautiful. I mean, I the architecture is. over there is just stunning. So, you know, and that, that's the thing about being an actor, getting to go to all these places right. and see all of these things. And I don't take, I do not take any it's of this pretty, for granted. It's pretty old, too, isn't it? it it's very old, yes. So, so mm -hmm. it's like you're seeing what mankind created before we had technology, too. Absolutely, dude. Yes. Yeah, it, but, man, some of that stuff is like, look, man, I don't know if you know anything about Anchor One out there at... at um, in, in in India, but like all that detailed stuff all over that place is yeah. like what the, the intricate. Man. It's so intricate that the way it was made, yeah, it's it's yeah, very and it's stunning. Like identical. This is identical to this, you know, and it's like it's carved. Mm -hmm. But now sometimes, man, I mean, you know, I'm an ancient alien theorist. Sorry, I am. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe in the God above. That's for sure. Uh, but I do believe though that maybe he's not what everybody thinks he is. You know, and you know, I, mean, I just. There's too many. There's too many things pointing to. There's no way we could have got here. I mean, just in the last hundred years, look at the technology that we we have, and mm -hmm. now we have. We we were talking about on the podcast about Chat GPT. Have you heard of that? Mm -mm. Uh, it basically what's getting. I mean, it can write songs for you. Mm -hmm. So you just put in your subject matter, and it writes a song for you. Well, that's no fun. Well, here's the thing, though. The thing is, is like, is it just another tool that's coming? Like my son's in college, and it's like, well, son. Are you using Chat GPT? And he's like, "Well, no." I said, "You're lying," <laughs> because now you can just put in your, your your subjects 
or you know what it's going to be about, and it writes the whole entire essay for you. Right. That's... And, and you can't tell. You can't tell. You can say, oh, I want it to sound like Hemingway. I want it to sound like freaking so-and-so writer or this writer. Wow. And, they'll, and they'll write it in that type of form, too. So that's why I was asking. And, you know, the great thing about it is, though, I believe what you're doing is not going to be replaced ever. You know, you can't replace an actor. That's true. Uh, audio, I have a... I mean, I have a service that masters my stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so... And they do, and it does a great, great job. But, I mean, I'm not bragging, but mine doesn't need much mastering. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the truth. And it's like, because, because I'm an old guy knows what he's doing. Sure. Um, that's why I tell my young wife all the time. Yeah, there I'm you go. My old guy knows what he's doing. There you go. <laughs> Keep her happy. That's right. So, yeah. so, so, Romania, I mean... Dude, is it the big deep canyons like that? Like I see in the in video. You know, see, I didn't get to. You know, when I flew into Bucharest, I mean, I had a driver pick me up, and we drove through downtown. I mean, I got to see the king, the king's uh, the king's house. I mean, and it's huge. I mean, it's just now when I, I don't know a whole lot about Romanian right. government and all that stuff, but the driver he spoke really good English, and he told me about a lot of things and and how the bombings and stuff over there, you know, that these buildings made it through these bombings. I mean, and these buildings are all stone. Was that, was that the Germany? When they, when yeah. They, yeah. Back when, you know, you know, America and, and the Germans. Germans and all that, it was amazing. So, I mean, these, these buildings survived some major wars over there and it's just, um, the country was so, I mean, the streets and stuff were so compact, but they were so clean. It, it, I mean, really? they, yes, they had guys walking around. There's people walking around with like trash cans, picking up trash as you go down the road. I mean, it's just, that's what their job was. And it just kept it clean. I mean, it just, and now when I went over there, it was dead of winter, cold, snowing on the ground and everything else. But it was, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I had an amazing time. Dude, I've got to go over there. You make me want to go over there. Yeah. Right and back. getting to work with Louis Mandalore and Calcis Mandalore and stuff like that. It was, right. yeah, that was, it was amazing, you know. So what, what was it set like in one of those castles? No, it was, it was an action film. So, I mean, we had scenes at the airport. We had scenes in hotels. We had scenes, uh, dri driving scenes and stuff like that. So it right. was set pretty much all around the city. In, in just different locations. So it was, yeah. Right. Well, I, I remember there was a scene on uh, the Born Supremacy mm -hmm. through that place. Yeah. It looked pretty badass. It's it's anyway. really it's really cool. Dude. <laughs> so so what what's the movie that you just got through with here? A uh, child of love, you know. Child, and child I, of love. Okay, I, okay, I played a, I played a preacher, and um, it, it, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a well, it's going to be a really I think really good movie. It's it's, it's about this couple that uh, they have this child with Down syndrome. And it's it's, oh, it's, wow. it's 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 I think it's going to be a really heartwarming movie, and I think people are going to really it's going to really hit home with a lot of people, and um, I think people are going to enjoy it. I don't want to I don't I don't want to say too much about it. You know, it's got give it's, it away. Yeah, it got Eric Roberts in it. It's going to I think it's going to be a good film. Is it a, is it a, is it a drama or is it action? In the action? No, no, no. It's no action. Suspense. It's more of a it's it's more of family type. Film. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Heartwarming, I, I would say, more than so than anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, wow. That goes from going from Jason Voorhees to that is yeah. pretty tough. And and like I said, that's I like the diversity. That you know, I, I want to play different characters. I play from TV shows on Oxygen Network and stuff like that. Playing a cop, uh -huh. um, I play a cop a lot. Um, got, I get to play these characters. I just went out to L.A. and shot Dark World of Oz. Uh, well, we did the trailer for it where I'm playing the beast in it, right. which is a lion, which turns out to be a werewolf. Because if you look in the early books of the Wizard of Oz, you know, the witch sent out werewolves and not monkeys, you know, to get right. Dorothy. Yeah, the, the original. So he took it back to that to make it a horror film. So we're doing that as a horror film. So, I mean, I, I try That's to do everything. Badass, oh, dude, I can't. I'm so like into that. Yeah. That will be awesome. I know. Yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome. And, and, and I like some of these movies that they're turning that way. Sure. Well, The yeah. Grinch turned into a horror film. I haven't seen it mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Have, have you seen it? Did no, you, okay, I haven't. Okay, I haven't seen it yet either. I'm just wondering how, how that's going to turn yeah. out. Yeah, the Winnie the Pooh. I mean, they turned Winnie the Pooh into that's a horror. Right. I heard about that. <laughs> what the hell? And is I haven't that about? seen that either, so I don't. I can't. I can't say anything about it. So I haven't seen it. But yeah, I mean, I know they did. So how do you feel that uh, the industry? Because I've got a ton to ask you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, the, the how do you feel that the streaming industry is going to affect the the, the the movie industry? Are you? It already has. I mean, but I mean, do you mm -hmm. think it's going to 
hurt it really bad or do you think it's going to help it? Well, this is the thing. I think COVID hurt. I mean, I, I hate, I hate bringing that up, but I mean, co when COVID hit and everybody was so scared and everybody, you know, was nobody go to a freaking movie. Well, and they shut them down, you know, because right. they can't have people in closed in spaces like that. So that hurt the movie theater that helped the streaming because people could stay at home and watch right. Netflix and Hulu and prime and everything else. So that helped that. Well, right now, some a lot of people are still scared to go out to the movie theater. I know. It's and like it's, it's over with. It's yeah. Over, it's well, over. yeah. It kind of. Yeah. But I mean, people, I hear people getting it all the time, though. But that's what I get all the time. It's like, well, why do I need to? Why do I need to pay these high prices at the movie theater when I can just pay what the thirty dollars a month for Netflix or whatever it is? I don't know what I don't know right. what Netflix is, but they pay the streaming and get all the kinds of movies and stuff on Netflix. I know, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, but. You, you know, it's it's so funny because how the, the, the movie business is set up. I, I actually had a idea about that's how we should set up music, you know. Because, okay, if you want the Jay-Z's new single today, you can pay this much money, or his new record today, you can pay this much money on this particular website. Okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Or you wait until it goes to streaming and you can stream it. Or, or, or just have it where it's like, you know, because the movies have that, that because I want to see the Avatar movie, even though I've heard different things about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I told the wife this past weekend, my son, my 19-year-old my, my son, my 20-year-old son, he was like going to go, we were going to go to the movies like, Dad, I got to exam tomorrow. I don't really want, you know, because I'm like, well, you know, you know, <laughs> your mom's not going to want to go. So so it's like, you know, I think, so she's like, no, let's wait till we're home because it's a two and a half hour movie right. and we can, we can smoke cigarettes and watch TV and pretty sure. eat popcorn and not worry about, you know, and some people that's their attitude, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's their attitude. Um, and it, 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 you know, so you have a choice, you can see it right then or you can wait and then get it cheaper yeah. later, you know, where, uh, it'd be a, there at the, I don't know. Okay. Let me back up here. Cause I got to ask you about this too. I, I was stuck on the industry thing for a second. Um, how about man, what do you feel about this 4D and um, what is it the HDX H HDX have you seen have you seen that I have yeah mm -hmm. I mean how do you feel that's changing things Do you think that's going to change things uh, Of course it is I mean yeah I mean it's just like a video game you know you, you used to get the Atari you know and the graphics that's in that and then you moved to PlayStation and, and then you know right. the graphics get better every time Well th these cameras are getting better and better as as right. we go and um yeah i mean it, it's changing the industry i mean it really is the way it looks well i guess that's a really good answer for, or a good question for michael you know to, it would be a lot better question for them well, because the guys are doing just it just the technical part of it sure like, because I me mean, i've been acting you know i mix some atmos stuff you know for the movies and stuff mm -hmm. and um and it definitely is a different world. Sure. I mean, and I'm an audio. actor. I, I'm, I'm in front of the camera. So, you know, I'm I'm depending on those guys to make me look good. Right, right, You know, right. because the better I look, the better the movie's going to be and everything else. So, and that's the reason I've got to give my 110% in front of the right. camera to where these guys can do their magic behind the camera. And that's movie magic is behind the camera. Right. The actor can only do so much. These guys are amazing when, when it comes to editing and all that stuff. Well, I, I want to ask you, here's more, <laughs> more, some personal stuff mm -hmm. um, to get you ready for the movies. Um, what's your workout routine? You're a big guy. Do you yeah. work out every day? Well, practically I work out. I, I try to give myself one to two days rest, you know, during the week, but yes, I work out now. I work out different. I don't go in the gym and, and hit every muscle group every day no i do not i will right. go in and hit chest and arms or i'll do back and shoulders and i'll do legs and i'll do you know i, I, I switch it up i just got back in the gym two and a half weeks yeah. ago and the mm -hmm. difference between me before two and a half weeks ago and now is completely different but, sure but i'm on hgh and um mm -hmm. and testosterone which my testosterone, testosterone hadn't come in. But I'm saying, mm -hmm. do you take any supplements like that? No, I, I used to, but I, I don't know more. You're no. just a mm -hmm. big freaky yeah, guy. I'm just a big guy. But yeah, no, it, it, it's 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 all about maintaining and 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 doing good for your body, eating right, right, drinking you know drinking enough water, you know, and putting the right things in your body. You know, pretty much. I don't I don't smoke. I I, I mean, I drink occasionally, right. but you you just got to watch what you do. And well, the reason why I was asking yourself. I, I think as, as you know, big as you are, you're mm -hmm. gonna get a lot of that. The questions like that, and sure, and you know, you could get to being as big as the Rock if you wanted to be. It could. Know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh no, if know. I took that stuff, yeah, I'd be huge. 
but it, it's just it's just maintaining now. It, right. It's I'm at I'm at an age now. I'm I'm 51. So, so I'm 52. So yeah, so I'm 51, and I, I I try to take care of myself. I don't want to look 51, and it's not because I'm worried about my age. I I don't mind getting older. I, I like being 50. I like I, I do too. And I the love thing being is, 50. I, I like it, but at the same time, I, I just want to take care of myself, and I want to I want to do good for me. That way, I can take care of you know the people that I love and all that stuff down the road. Right. It, it ain't got nothing to do with like. Oh my God! I'm getting gray hair. I don't care about this gray hair. Me I mean, neither. I, I like being, you know, you know. I, 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 I have a girl that's 17 good. years younger than me, so <laughs> she, you know, she's she's young. So I mean, I have to keep try to keep up with the maintain the body, and I'm gonna get big again. I was really big before freaking the COVID thing hit. Well, yeah. before I took the vaccine, but that's something. Uh, you know how old the internet is. You can't say too much about that. I just know yeah. that it made me really sick. It gave me super. Uh, um, uh, arthritis like I have no inflammation blockers now so I have to take mm. steroids and all this different medication and I wasn't on anything before the vaccine right. you know I should be able to talk about it freely because that's what happened to me you know but no. but you know they'll give you you know how they'll flag you oh yeah you no know, I mean I know unless you're Joe Rogan <laughs> <laughs> Joe <laughs> and Rogan. you go fuck the system and everything be fine <laughs> but uh, anyway I don't know why that is but you know, but um, but uh, yeah so I was asking about your workout routine because I think you're going to get asked that a lot you know I do I get I get asked you know, I'm a, I am a big guy I am 6'2 weigh 230 you know so I'm a big guy but at the same time, you got to watch what you do as far as these roles go. I don't want to run myself out of a role, you know, by right. any means and right, stuff like that. Because you'd be too big. Could be too big. You could, but like uh, playing the preacher, you know, I was I was kind of where. But when I put on a long sleeve shirt and a vest and a, a, a suit jacket. I look like anybody else. So, you know, it can cover it up. You can cover when I do Westerns, you know, I can, I wear those long sleeve shirts and you don't see, cause back in 1800s, you didn't, you wasn't getting guys. that was this big and stuff like that. Right, so, right. you know, but it is what it is. I, right. I still work out to make myself feel better and to be healthy, you know, and I'm a pretty right. healthy guy. Well, if you ask me, I think you should try to get a role on the Vikings. That's what I want to be in. I want to be in the new Vikings. That stuff. would be cool. Well, I've had some auditions with Yellowstone. I don't mind telling okay. that. Yep. So, okay. and I'm a big Western guy because I, I do ride horses and um, all that. I, I love riding horses, have all my life. I did professional rodeo for almost five years. So right. I, I love that. I rode uh, bulls and bareback. And so really, I did. Yep. I did that for a long time. Bro but you broke some bones too. I broke my whole face. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I got lucky. They they put me back together. But yeah, I mean it, it is. It was a rough sport, but it was a fun sport. And I grew up around horses and all that. My dad had horses and cows and and all that stuff growing up. And and I, I just continued to do it. You know, me and. So, so, so do you think you'll get the part on Yellowstone? <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's it's. I'm doing everything that I can. Every time that I get an audition. I, I, I do it as best as I can, and hopefully that the, the casting director will like me. And that's the thing. You know, I've been looked at four times now, so and I'm not I'm not discouraged by it. I mean, I'm not. I'm going to keep putting in four things, and if one of these days I may be able to get on it. If not, it's okay. I mean, it's it's I'm right. gonna it, it's not the end of the world, and I'm going to keep pushing. And that's the thing. You got to have a tough skin in this in this business. You get told no way more than you get told yes. And at first it bothered me, you know, it's like, I'm not good enough, you know, and I'm just not, but you know what? There's always something that comes along that's going to be better or, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it be a short film, a video, uh, independent, uh, feature film or a SAG film, treat it as the best thing ever. What's a SAG film? Uh, when I say SAG film, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like the big films you see in movies. It's it's like the SAG actors, oh, the Screen okay. Actors Guild. You know, the, you're they're okay. paying your dues oh, and all that you. stuff. Okay. Yes. I know what you're talking about. So I'm that's sorry. a SAG. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's a SAG. No, and I mean that's probably a lot of people would ask what a SAG film is. But that's that's the big movies with with all the big name A list actors in it and stuff like that. Right. They they're paying their dues to the the organization and all that stuff. So it's a SAG. What they call so it's kind of like film. the musicians union here. So absolutely, just okay. like that. Yeah. So if you pay your dues and stuff like that, you yeah. Now, if you're a SAG actor, is what they call it, then you're paying your dues. Then you can't do independent films. So what? No, you can't. You can't because SAG don't. You know they won't allow that. You know, so you have to either go. 
Fycor, what the, they call Fycor. So what do you pay them? You have to pay a pension fee and all that stuff. It like is. That. It's it's a yearly dues and stuff like that. You pay your dues and you got insurance through them. It's it's like a union. Right. Is what it is. It's a Screen Actors Guild union, and you you know you get benefits and all that stuff from it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a lot of paperwork stuff to it. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was just wondering about that because yeah. that's that's that, that's kind of weird, and it's it's good because actually, ma'am, you're our first big actor on here, so I'm excited well, because you. it really does. You know, the, the podcast has been leaning more on uh, music. Music. And we, well, and now Josie Scott was an actor in a, you know, in a, a series, TV series. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's also on Mad, Mad, not Mad, he's on a PGA Golf on a, on, on a Xbox or whatever. You can play, oh, wow. you can play him against, yeah. you know, Tiger Woods, which, you know, it was just funny as hell. Cause that would be I, funny. I playing golf. But anyway, <laughs> he's one of my best friends. He's so fucking funny. He's just a hilarious guy. But, uh, but no, uh, I had, okay, so let me ask you, does, does, I mean, I'm serious. Does Jason get the girls? Well, <laughs> Jason don't say a whole lot. So, uh, you, know, you know, maybe that's the reason girls like Jason is because he don't say anything. You know, he just he just acts. So, you know, I, have it, you had any offers like I'm serious. Like, have I, you had any offers to do the nasty in the mask? You're you going you to get me in trouble. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, no comment. I'm going to play the fifth on Um the mask, the mask. People like the mask, and and I, I like the mask. And and the thing of it is about the mask is it brings people. And and you're gonna people find this funny. I talk to school. I, I want to be a little little um, on the serious side now. Okay. I go to, I go to schools okay. and I talk to kids. And I, I'm a big anti-bullying guy. And I don't like this suicide rate that's going up every day with these kids. And right. um, and not just kids, it's it's alcohol, alcoholics and stuff, and, and it's it's soldiers that are killing themselves because of PTSD, and all that stuff. And I go and I talk to these people, the kids especially, and um, I use this mask. And people always, you know, they ask me, "How are you using a horror, a a, a serial killer, pretty much, to go into schools and talk to kids?" The only answer I can give them is if I walk in there in a suit. Or if I walked in there as just me, they're going to look at me as any other teacher, as any other right. principal, as any other whatever. I walk in on stage or I walk in a classroom and I got this mask on and a tight T-shirt and as big as I am, everybody shuts up. Yeah. Everybody shuts up and everybody wants to listen to me. That gives me the attention that I need to if, if I can only reach one person. Which you're one kid. That's all I need to reach. Your, your, your children are growing now. My kids are older. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, because I was wondering what you thought, felt about the education system, and because of that particular thing you're talking about, the suicide rate, and the the bullying thing. <clears throat> um, you know, I guess my big concern is is, is like. Uh, with kids is like not knowing that they're loved, you know, and not knowing Absolutely. that somebody cares, you know. And I think that when you show them to a school and you show that you took the time to go to school, and uh, because I would love for you to go to my kids' school out here in Hendersonville, and it's right out there. I don't know, you know, if you could do that one of these days, but they have a, like I had, I did, I did a career day last year, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you something funny, trying to get a little bit, you know, kind of make it a little bit more humorous. So here I am, I'm showing them pictures of the studios I work in, all these big consoles and platinum records and stuff. Sure. And the first question was, this kid raised his hand, he goes, and I went, yeah, 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 I'm right in the middle of talking, you know. Mm-hmm. He goes, so when did you start going bald? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So you got to love the way that they think. Um, and I me, mean, I have seven kids, mm-hmm. so... Um, I'd love for you to come out and do that with them because it is a problem. And you know, there was some little girl that freaking um, um, killed herself last week. I saw on the news around yeah. here, and I was and it was like a, and I'm sorry, mom and dad, I didn't mean to to be a pain in the ass, and I didn't mean to 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 do these things. I didn't mean to make bad grades, you know. I didn't mean to, you know, and felt like you know, it's like, why would you want to kill yourself? And I wonder if it has to do something. With the internet thing, do you think it's the internet that's doing this? And you know, social media things. This is what I'm going to say about that. I, I don't know. I don't. Social media has a lot to do with it, and and this Twitter and Instagram and Facebook has a lot to do with it. But this is the thing, and this is the thing about middle school and high school kids. Nowadays, both parents have to work to make the household run. Yep. 
it's not that these parents are bad parents. What I'm saying, though, is these parents get caught up in everyday life of having to take care of a household. And sometimes these kids don't get told that they are good enough, that they're worthy, that they're 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 loved and that they're they're wanted and all that stuff. So it's not that that they're bad parents. It's just sometimes you get caught up and you forget the little things in life. And that's sometimes when I go into a classroom, you can tell the kids that need to hear what I'm saying. Really? Yes. They look at you. They cry. You can see it in their eyes. And, and it, it tears me up, dude. It tears me up to pieces to see these kids like that. I am so passionate about this, doing this, right? And I have used, that's the one reason that I want to make it in this business is because I want to use my platform as a, as an actor to, to, to try to save as many kids as I can and as many PTSD soldiers and stuff like that I can to talk them off a ledge, to talk them out of alcoholism, to talk them and let them know that they are worthy, that they are wanted, that they are needed, and they are always enough. You do not have to be told every day. You just need to know that you are enough to make it in this life. Somebody, somebody out there wants you here. You need to be here. If anybody is listening to this, know that you are put on this earth for a reason. There is nobody here that is not here for a reason. You're right. worthy. You're worthy. You're needed. You're wanted. And it's just, man, bad times are just temporary. It's it's really the truth. It's like, you know, I mean, times when I was younger that I just wanted to throw my hands up. Sure. And um, my dad was a veteran, and he killed himself. Absolutely. And uh, and he and, you know, terrible. And, and he, but but you know, I was eighteen at the time. I didn't understand what all was going on. Mm. I, I didn't understand uh, well, the pain he was going through. Mm -hmm. And and I. You know, to this day, I don't understand a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? But it was a, a time in my life where it was just like that, you know, that, you know, that button it hits, man, where your heart just feels like it ain't even there anymore, you know, because sure. it's just lost, you know? Yeah. But and that, you don't want to do that to your kids and you don't want to do it to your parents mm. and you don't want to, you don't want to do it to people you love, you know, because it's, because it's been, it took me years to get over it. Now, some of it, I think, though, maybe was a secret to my success because I wanted to make him proud. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I knew he was watching. But but now, you know, there's also times that I feel like it held me back. Sure. And held me from cool. So, you know, um, um, wrote a song one time, The Easy Way Out is the hardest for those left behind. You. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, and it's it, it's not, um, it, it's something that I think it's wonderful that you're doing it for the kids because we need people like that to, to help them. You know, it's because you don't know what's going do. on. You don't know what's going on no. with, with kids and like me. I'm the parent that had <laughs> as Jackson. I get I rent like a trailer on Halloween mm -hmm. and, and put hay in it. And I, I'm the same I, way. I, I take I the, the same kids. Dad, I take man. The, I'm, I'm the dad that takes all the kids. I'm and, the same way. I know. had my side by side. I had my trailer. I had the, the, the I brought all my yeah, kids. Yeah, man, it's so fun. This, I love this it. This bullying thing in school is really is really crazy. And, and, you know, and, and kids are using these stupid things right here, these phones, they're using these to bully kids. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, they're making fake Instagram pages. They're making fake Facebook pages and they're bullying these kids to, to almost where they want to just kill themselves. And it's, and it's working. And that's, what's got to stop. Cause they're mean. Well, they are. A lot they of are, kids mean. are mean. Yes, and and I'm sorry, and, and I'm not singling them out, but the girls are sometimes worse than the boys. Oh yeah, because they're just it's it's a, it's a it's a pride thing. It's it's you know it's if you don't look as good or if you don't you don't you have your hair long or if you don't have your nails done or it's just it's just whatever. whatever. But the thing of it is, I just, all these kids that I talk to. The good ones, the bad ones, the the in betweens, it doesn't matter. I just, if I could just reach some of them, just to keep them, just to know that they got somebody that they can go to, that they can talk to. It, it, do you feel? Do you feel that the parents? You know, I talked to my mother uh, yesterday. We were talking about my little girl being on TikTok. You know, and I'm like, well, mom. She shouldn't be putting any videos out on TikTok. And she said, well, I haven't seen any because we, we she did. You know, and she wasn't doing anything bad. It's just that she's too young. I mean, at 10 years old, you shouldn't be putting out 
You know? No. Because you got stalkers out there, sick people that are looking 100%. at that. 100%. Mm -hmm. And we caught one guy talking to her, and I said, that's it, that's it. You know, of course, her grandmother's worried sick. You know, she's worried, you know, that she's going to be outside, and she's going to know, they're going to know where she's at, and they're going to pick her up, and let's not know. And, then, you know, it's like it's the one the story of your well, life, you know, and it's like, you know, it's just scary. It's just scary. These time. apps, these apps like Snapchat and all this stuff, it can show your location of where you're at. And that's yes. that's not right, though. No, I mean, but I'm saying, oh, that need... shouldn't be that way. No, and I just wish that they can make. I wish Facebook and, and Instagram and all of these 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 social media sites can, even for adults, don't let us make fake sites. Don't if you got a site, that's and I know they can monitor it. There's a way. Oh, there's got to be. I can talk to you right now about. RV sales and I'll get RV things on right, my phone right. all day long because they know about it. that's what I'm saying they know how to do that but they but they allow people to make all these fake sites and these girls and boys alone making fake sites and bullying these kids has got to stop because the technology is so high now and everybody's got it the, the AI ought to be able to tell when there's being somebody being bullied absolutely and they should be able to tell actually the way they even write you know, and put messages in. They mm -hmm. should be able to tell what age they are. Yeah. I mean, that's that simple. I mean, we were talking earlier, me and my wife, we were at Walmart, and uh, I was talking about how sophisticated their security system is, you know. Mm -hmm. Look, if Walmart can tell when you walk in the door, if you're a person that will steal or not steal or could steal or might steal or, or just a flat-out shoplifter, whatever, um, if they can tell that by your body language walking in the door, they can tell if somebody's going to be bullying somebody. Sure. It's bullying somebody in the AI. But why Why isn't there anything being done about that, you feel? I mean, do you feel Congress will ever step up to bat on that, or they're too worried about fighting over freaking I, um, some, some— That some, is some, one thing that I don't talk about is politics. I don't get into, <laughs> I don't get into politics. I, uh, I, I just hate it. You know what? I care about the kids. I care about I right. care about these soldiers got PTSD. That, do you think that, it's going to take a bill, though, from Congress? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. I was I was 100%. And I would go in front of Congress in a heartbeat and talk about this if I had to. And that's how passionate I am about this. But I, I would, I'd love to go to any school. So if anybody's out there and you're hearing this and you want Jason Voorhees to come to your school and talk to the kids about anti-bullying, I would do it because I have a good message. Well, I definitely want you to come to my kids' school and I will ask them about it. Because, Absolutely. You know, well, having, having four, you know, having two sets of twins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, now it's middle, middle school and up pretty much. I don't go to elementary schools. And the reason being is because those might scare them. Well, it's just, I don't think that they would retain the information when you get in middle school. That's when you start choosing the friends that well, you hang around. And this is the thing about choosing friends. You're either going to choose, you're going to choose the right way. You're going to choose the wrong, wrong way. way. There's no in between. There's no in between. You're going to choose the right and you're going to, and, but you know, right from wrong. So if, if you're the set of friends that you choose, if you know they're fixing to do, or if they're one of them's fixing to do something that you know is not right, you've got to have the guts and the willpower and the and the the I guess the 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 just the the I don't know the, what the word I'm, I, the gusto well, about you to say this is wrong. I'm not going to do it, and either walk away or get away from that friend. I mean, you got to, the choices that you make in middle school will haunt you for the rest of your life. Right. And it really is. It really will. It, it really will, because it, 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 it defines the, the crowd that you start hanging around in high school. Right. And you got to find, and I was that way. I, I, and I, you know what? And I, I'm not afraid to say this. And I'm not. I'm not boasting myself. I chose right. I chose the right. I, I did too. I chose the right set of friends to be around, and those mm -hmm. those were good people. We didn't do things bad. We didn't want to get in trouble. You know, we wanted to do the things right for our teacher. We wanted to do our homework. We, well, we to threw that. water balloons at cars. Oh, that's somebody. yeah, but I'm stuff saying, like but, that. But, but we never did anything like you know. But vandalism or smoking at an oh, age, and you yeah, know, you never know, that's, did that. no, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm I'm 51 years old. I've never had a cigarette to my lips and i'm Man, thankful me, i smoke all the time and that's but, but i've had so many bad habits but i'm also a rock producer you know what i mean i've yeah. been around you know but you know what i was an athlete you know i played football i mean yeah, me too yeah and, and, and you know what's so funny a friend of mine tj out in california he always goes why are you smoking you're an athlete you're not you're not this guy yeah. you know and it it, it it hurts my feelings but he's true it's sure. true and you know you define who you are do, sure. do you feel do you feel that um, you manifest things, you know, through your attitude and your your thoughts, or do you feel that there there is a 
a contract written out before you're born, and that's the one you're going to freaking do. And there's this is the thing. I know, I know you, it's a crazy question, but you I know, just want to I, see. I, you're an interesting guy, so I have to ask that. Well, thank you, and you know, and I have my demons too, and I have, I I struggled with a lot of things, you know, especially you know being alone for so long and stuff like that. But yes, I think that if you have an, a, a a positive energy about you and you speak it and 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 you make you you've got to make your path. You can't just sit around and wait for something to come to you. That's the reason everywhere I go, I never meet a stranger. It's just like meeting you, man. I, me and you became but friends over the phone. I mean, I it was just like as soon as I talked to you, it was like the energy was there that that me and you had, and it was it was great. And just meeting you today, it's it's. Uh, Thank you, man, dude. But no, it's, true. It. it's true. It it's true. It like, is. I, I was going to say that. It's like I've no. known you my whole life. It's like, yeah, I'm it, <laughs> and that's what I want. I want people that, that I want people that when they meet me, that they seem like they've known me their entire life. Right. Because I'm going to treat everybody the same. I'm not going to treat one per. Just I don't, and I don't care what side Republican Democrat I don't religion I don't care about none of that we're all we're all human beings we're all living on this earth and trying to make something happen just treat everybody with respect and with dignity and with with happiness and think positive and think positive everybody everybody's not going to hurt you you right. got to be diligent. And you got to you got to keep your especially in this day and age you can't walk into Walmart without worrying about somebody walking in with a but, uh, at the, no. but at the same it's, time, it's you can't walk through this earth thinking that that's going to happen every time either. So you, you, everybody's not bad. And I want people when they meet me, just because I wear a Jason mask, right? I want them to know that I'm a good guy and that I'm always going to have their back. It's just like you. You call me tomorrow and say, James, come help me move a table. I'm going to be down here. I'm going to help you move a table. <laughs> that's, it's, awesome. it's, that's, that's the way, that's the kind of guy I am. It's in, you know, you can ask Michael and Jack, you know, those, those two guys have already helped me so much. You know, they, they, they trusted me. And then Brian, you know, as the director, you know, they brought me into this movie, not knowing who I was. They've seen some of my work, but they didn't know who I was. They trusted me with that character. They trusted me that I was going to do the right thing. And I give them a hundred percent on everything that I do. And I, and for every movie that I'm in with them, I will always give them a hundred percent of everything I do. If I'm not acting and they, and I'm on set, I'm going to be helping out any way I can to help them. That's the, that's the kind of actor I want to be. I don't want to be one of these actors that, and I'm not talking about any actor. I don't, I don't know a lot of them personally, but I do have seen some of them the way they've acted like they deserve everything and they don't. This right. is the thing. You got to work for everything you get. I don't care if you're Brad Pitt or if you're James Stokes. It doesn't matter. You have to work for everything you get. And yeah. and, 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 and it, to, to me, there's a certain level that, uh, like as a producer, when I got to a certain level or a mixer, an engineer, mm -hmm. that, uh, that went to my head a little bit, you know, and then God backed me down and goes, hey, man, look, you're just a man. You're a man doing a job. I gave you this gift, do your job and shut the hell up. You know, yep. it's what I felt God was telling me, but I'm a, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm a, what do you call it? Spiritual. I'm, yep. a, you know, and I believe religious. that religious and I believe that too, that. you know, it's that. just like, it's just like doing this movie stuff. You know, you can get too big. And if you, and I'm telling you, you do that, you're going to get knocked down. Right. Because there's always somebody out there bigger and better than you are. I know it's. I and try to tell. I try to tell people that. Well, and I put myself and I surround myself with people that know more than I do. In every situation that I go into, I surround myself with people that know more than I do, and I keep my mouth shut because that's how you become smarter. And I think I think a lot of the key is too is 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 not be envious or jealous. No, okay, be so, happy for people. You know, and I'll say this on the podcast because I have to. I got this message, you know, this message last night. Uh, this guy was my assistant, and I just tore it. Now, listen, I was a little bit harder on him than I am Jackson. But, I mean, I tore his ass up every day, yelling at him, throwing things, teaching him how to engineer records and how to be a great man, how to be a mixer, how to take responsibility for your actions. Don't make excuses. Sure. You know, it's like in football. Like, I missed my block one time. We go back to the huddle and practice, and my coach is like, what happened, Springer? I'm like, I missed my block. You know, he, he outmaneuvered me. I mean, what do you want me to say? Okay, well, good. No excuses. No excuses. There's no excuse. You just got beat. Okay, well, get your ass back out there and get beat. Well, anyway, so he sends me this thing last night. 
and every year they come out with this list. There is a list of guys of top, top, the top 50 mixers in the world, in the world. Hmm. And he's on that list. Awesome. And I about start crying because I taught him, you know, I taught him a lot and, and um, he'll tell you I taught him everything he knows, but that's not true. He's become a lot well. bigger. And, you know, um, and, 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 you know, it just made me so proud because sure. he was one of those kids I didn't know. I knew he was a hard worker. I knew he was a strong person. But, man, I'm going to break him so he won't be broken by nobody else. And he yeah. shows up. I thought he hated me. He shows up at my back yeah. door about six years ago. And he said, man, I want to thank you for making me a man. Sure. Because you taught me how to be a man. Sure. And a mixer. And I was just appreciate. It. I just want to come see him. I like, come on in, man. See right. now he's one of my best friends. And that's a good <laughs> and that's a good feeling. It's just, and that's the reason I do this with the schools and stuff, man. And that's the reason I'm an actor right now today, man. I, I love it. I, I, I'm going to use that platform to do to do good. And 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 everything that I do, I, I don't want anybody to look at or to when they hear the name James Stokes to ever have a negative outlook on me. I want them to and all the directors that I've worked with and all that stuff, they've always called me back to work with me again. That's awesome. And that that makes me feel good because I know that once I do hit it big. And I, and I and I do. I believe I'm going to. I believe that I'm going to. I believe to. you will too. One hundred percent. I believe that. To yeah. You. And I, I believe I will. And it's and it's going to be because I've worked hard. I've treated people right. And I I I didn't I didn't backstab nobody. And I didn't I didn't do anything the wrong way. Right. And you know you know what's funny is James. I mean I'm I've experienced this. And uh, what's been hard and what is hard is sometimes people look at us like we've done them wrong and you don't see that and then like that's been like you know because you know like okay take for instance last week which is kind of funny but J jackson i forgot to pay him on friday well i just forgot to pay him so sunday night i'm like oh man i forgot to pay jackson you know i mean but he never says anything about anything you know but but you know so you don't know how people look at you that's what my biggest fear is because i'm like how in the world do they think that I did them wrong? I don't get it. But that's the music business, too, is like that a lot. I mean, sure. the acting might be, the acting business might be like that. But the music business is a lot of people, especially in the rock business, because rock isn't selling very big right now. Yeah. So they can say, oh, the rock's doing good. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the rock business is pretty shallow. But yeah. um, you know, I've had two number ones in the past month, so I shouldn't be talking about it being bad. Awesome. But but still, it, it it you know it's not what it used to be. I put it that way. The money isn't flowing like it used sure. to be. So a lot of people are fighting over scraps, and it's like that's not going to be my thing. I'm not going to fight over scraps, you know. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, I want to ask you about Bigfoot because you're okay. a Bigfoot guy. I am. And yeah. uh, so so you you so you believe you belong to the organization, the Bigfoot. Organization. I do. Yeah, I, I I got associated with uh, big the BFRO, the Bigfoot Association, a long time ago. And um, loved it ever since, you know, going on Bigfoot hunts and stuff like that. So it, it's great. Um, my movie, you know, Jason Voorhees, Voorhees Night of the Beast, It's it's got a Bigfoot in it. And, you know, I get to fight Bigfoot. So, And then uh, <laughs> not, and Night After the Beast, you know, I get to play Bigfoot. So, you know, it, it's awesome, you That's know. Awesome. And I have some other things in the works, hopefully, with another Bigfoot movie. Um, getting to meet some of the Bigfoot hunters and stuff like that from TV, is, it's mm -hmm. been great at these cons that I go to. Um, have we met Stacy yeah. Brown yet? I have not met Stacy. No, he, but, he's a, yeah, he's a yeah. character. He came on and did and did a podcast with me. He's hilarious. well. If you ever have him back on, I want to have yeah, me have he, me here. So <laughs> he has a car that says Bigfoot Stacy on it. He's awesome. got it wrapped, that's you know, awesome. and everything. He's but awesome. I do. I, I love it. And, you know, and people look at you like you're crazy and all that stuff, and that's okay. You know, it, it's it's something that that I love. It's just like ghost hunting, man. I, I love to do ghost hunters. I, I love the paranormal. I, I love right. doing all that stuff. Well, we we actually had America Ghost Hunters on here. Awesome. Um, and, and it you know we got to do another one with them. And he has some incredible evidence. I mean, sure. But man, I'm gonna tell you something that might scare you. Okay. The last podcast. I swear, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. There was an orb when my guest was sitting here. It was our Stevie Moore, and an orb flew right, right behind him. Right behind. Him. While we're sitting here talking, and it, it kind of. I was told that this place is haunted, so it kind of freaked me out a little bit when I saw it on the video yesterday. I was like, oh. You didn't see it in person? No, on here I never saw it. Wow! But on the video you can see it just gliding just right across yeah. here. This is the orb, and it I, just disappears behind him. I love that stuff. I mean, I do. I love it. I, and, and, then, and, and then one time I had my Bigfoot app, my Bigfoot app, my my, my ghost app on, mm -hmm. and I was sitting here, and I was just, you know, I don't know if you've seen that ghost app. It does the um, 
was it EBT? What yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so anyway, so it, it measures those things. So I'm sitting here. I got it on silent, right? And I'm I have this band in here, and uh, I'm sitting there, and it said, it said um, under the table, and then it said. Greek. Well, you know how big of a cut up I am just meeting me and stuff. Sure. So I'm like, well, I wonder if like the Greek means he's like going to stick his finger up a tater hole or something like that. <laughs> and this, oh this meter went crazy. Really? And I didn't see it. And I looked down and said, oh my God, what the hell? Like it was because I was mocking it. Oh. And this thing went nuts. I went, oh, I mean, and you got to see the video of that. I had to watch that. Really nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. But the orb flying across there. And our Stevie Moore is I love him, man. He is a crazy man. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. Yeah, he was recording the podcast on some tape recorders in front of him. Yeah. And then playing them back like the last five minutes, he'd play them back while we were having a discussion. Oh wow. It drove me crazy. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I bet that would. <laughs> That's, funny. Drove me That's insane. funny. So have you ever ran into Bigfoot? You know, I've n- I've I've never seen one. So I've never no. seen one. I've, I've never seen one. I, you know, I've seen evidence. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there's been things out there in the woods that I've I've ran across. It's like, there's no way. There's no way. There's not. A- there's no way a human could have done this, or an animal, a deer, or anything right. like couldn't have done that. And it's like there's evidence out there, and and you know, it, it's 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 amazing. Do you think he's an interdimensional being, or do you think he's just a just an animal? I think he's just an animal. I think it's yeah. I do it's too. I, I don't. I don't. The, the spaceship thing with you know. I, yeah. Not that I don't believe in in outer you know aliens or whatever. I, it's not that. It's just the Bigfoot thing. I, I, this Earth is so big, so vast, so it's much room, so much. It, I just I, there's things still being discovered in the ocean and not even in the ocean, out in the woods and out in the. There's stuff still being discovered. So why could not there be a Bigfoot? You know, I know he's elusive, and I know that nobody's really seen him. But there has been some evidence out there that was just almost overwhelming, and it's just like, mm, I don't know. Well, now Tennessee has pumas in it. You know, they do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and ask anybody how many times they've seen a puma carcass or a puma, and mm-hmm. they'll they'll say. Well, you don't find nobody. I mean, that's what right. I'm saying because it's yeah. like, well, Bigfoot's bigger. Well, humans are pretty big. Yeah. I mean, so you never find a carcass, yeah. you know, because a carcass is going to go away pretty quick. But sure. what if what if Bigfoot bears are dead like we do? What if they're a lot just a smart animal? But there's, okay, just think about if we had the senses of a, if or the eyesight like of a, of, of a dove, you know, because yeah. the doves can really see great when you, yeah. you know, I'm a dove hunter. Mm-hmm. So they can pick out, man, colors. I mean, they can pick out anything sure. from any distance, you know. Yeah. And what if we had the smell of a bloodhound, you know, and the instinct and the strength of a freaking, you know, a wild animal? I mean, right. uh, would be hard to get a, a, a shot at us, too. I mean, or a look at us, you know. And Absolutely. if you did run up on one, it would probably look a little too human for you to kill. Right. You know, so. But, you know, there was a guy, Scotty Austin was on here, um, you know, a singer from Save and Able. Well, he's not anymore. Sorry about that. He left Save and Able. He's a solo artist now. But uh, he um, he got on here. There was a guy that freaking killed three of them, him and some buddies. He was on his deathbed and told them where they were. I'm going to wonder how that comes out. Mm. Um, he was on uh, one of those Bigfoot podcasts he was telling me about. But anyway, I got to do some more looking into that. Do you remember the name of that guy, Jackson? I, I don't you remember the guy? Okay, okay. I was just wondering. I was just wondering. <laughs> I'm going to get Jackson to be on the podcast more. Mm. But, um, well, man, we'll get old Michael G. and Connor in here. Am I saying his That'd name right? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah cool. <laughs> Let's take a break and we'll get him in here, too. Absolutely. Dude, you're an amazing, man. Oh, man, thank you you're so much. You're an amazing yeah. human. 